I wanted to talk about uh, Sadell because she went through um, you know a challenging uh, pregnancy journey uh, nice. as her mother. Uh, she had a, you know, has had a, a healthy baby, which is obviously the, the, the good best part, right? But going through IVF, having some challenges as her mother, what was that like for you to see her go through that? Tough, really tough. Um, Cause that, you know, getting pregnant and conceiving it, especially from my perspective, if you looked at me, I, I, it was happening. So, you know, that whole concept that, you know, something watching my daughter think that something was wrong with her and then looking around and seeing her sister-in-laws just, you know, having their babies and going, why not me? Um, you know, we were going through our personal thing at the exact same time. And so she's pretty much the therapist of the family. So, you know, watching her trying to take care of us, but also focus on herself. And then me not, I couldn't do anything. It was one of those situations where I couldn't, I mean, I could just pray for her and just try to, you know, fill it with scripture and just keep her encouraged. But, you know, I think our relationship grew tremendously during this moment. Like we, you know, I, I would say I'm not their, their friend when they were growing up, but I think through this whole process, she and I have become friends. Um, and it's been a beautiful thing to watch um, because I just, I had to find a way to learn to just listen and not solve. And, and as a parent, and especially a mom, um, that's just in our DNA and great in, ingrained in us to do that. So uh, it was very difficult to watch her uh, and then to see her have her disappointments um, when, you know, the first two, uh, two to three attempts didn't happen. Um, it was tough, but uh, I am so proud of her and just how strong she had, she was through this whole process. How helpful do you think it was for her to, be so transparent about what she was going through. Extremely helpful. I think that was, that was how, well, how she got through it. I think just talking about it and um, it was her outlet to just say, Hey, here it is. And, and then she found a community. She found a Facebook community that, you know, she joined and then they, you know, support each other and leaned on each other. And, um, but that's her, like she's supposed to, her degree was uh, psychology and I'm trying to get her to go back and get this master's uh, and do this thing. Cause she is really, really good. She is, she's good about listening and and helping you figure out your next step without giving advice. And I love that. What kind of influence has her transparency, especially as you're, you were going through this book writing process, how much did that influence you? Or did it? <laughs> it didn't. I don't think it, yeah. it didn't. Mm -hmm. um, it really didn't. Cause I really, mm -hmm. as you know, now doing your book, I mean, you just kind of get in a little vault cause you're just mm -hmm. like, all right. Uh, and again, I just go back to the fact that when I started doubting myself and going, I don't want to do this book. I mean, I'm trying to figure out how am I going to pay these people this money back? They already <laughs> gave me. It was like three times. I was like, Oh God, I got to call Steph and that's what's money. <laughs> I don't want to do this. And she's like, mom, stop, stop. You can do this. So um, again, I think it was just more of her strength on that end than just her being transparent before um, on her platform. Hey, you mentioned the, in the first half of this podcast about how when you retired and transitioned out of, uh, out of that, how that left you with a di different feeling because you were ending something. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, you know, people know that you went through a, a divorce, have gone through a divorce. So that's another ending for you. Mm -hmm. um, how have you, or what's been helpful to you as you handled that transition out of being in a marriage that lasted over 30 years? Well, we're still going through it. So 
you know, it's tough and you just lean on the things that you know, which is communication, staying plugged in, staying connected, um, and trying to just keep things as normal as possible, but also being open to the new normals at the same time. And so, because I've never done this before, I don't know. <laughs> right. I don't know. Um, you know, you just wake up every day and you just try to just make the best decision you can that day. And you just lean on love and grace and you wait for the next day. Like you got, I just can't, I don't have the energy or the mental capacity to think further than the next day um, or that day. Um, Cause you just don't know what's going to come at you and you don't know what emotions are going to come out of you. You don't know what interactions are going to trigger in you. You just don't have any clue. So, you know, I've just learned this writing this book and going through all that I'm going through right now, we're going through has really just grounded me to just be still and be strong. Um, it's one of Seth's favorite scripture. His favorite scripture, uh, scripture is be strong and courageous. And, you know, those are words that I always thought that I was until I started going through this. And then it was like, whoa, this calls for a different kind of strength <laughs> and a different kind of courage. Uh, and it's not like playing sports or being on the court. It's a whole different kind of um, of situation. So day by day, just Lord, what you got today and you, and you woke me up and you got me here. So it's on you. <laughs> but, on. but being still though, it, um, is that, is that hard to do? Cause as you said, you, you have a, a doer kind of personality. So how challenging is that for you to sit in sometimes things that are you know, discomfort, sit in some chaos, maybe a little bit. Very hard, extremely hard. Cause I just wanted to go away. I just wanted to like, Hey, it's gotta be a fix. There's gotta be a fix. And, and in some of these situations, there isn't a fix. You know, when you're in relationships with people, it's more than it's more than you, it's bigger than you. So, you know, there's so many other people and, and characters playing into a moment and a situation. So, you know, sometimes you just be still, be quiet and let it happen. Just let, and you're going to survive. It's like a tornado. You're just sitting in the house and it's just swirling around your house and you're like, okay, the roof just came off and I'm still sitting in this tub, you know, like, ah, and then it goes away. And so, you know, there's been multiple times where I've just felt like that, like, ah, oh, the roof's come off. Shit, I'm just sitting here. <laughs> oh, okay, Lord. Um, and so, um, but that's been the growth in my, in my character too, is, you know, you, you got to ask for help, learn to ask for help, learn to be vulnerable, learn to be vulnerable with your kids, learn to let them mm. see. They were, you know, they were one of the things they were like, mom, it's okay. We finally see all of you when they've only seen a certain portion of me. And now as adults, them being adults, they're like, we appreciate that. We appreciate that because now we're parents. Now we are doing, are in the position that you were and it, it just helps them. So sitting still, being vulnerable, um, asking for help and giving yourself some grace. I got a tattoo on the back of my neck, grace and mercy. And every day I'm just like tapping, <laughs> <laughs> tapping. grace and mercy, Lord, grace and mercy. 